that's all we have at the moment. Life on benefits can be tough. The government in Westminster is undertaking a shake-up of the welfare system. The aim is to focus payments on those in greatest need and help claimants into work. They're also aiming to cut £12 billion from the spend on benefits. You think you could do this yourself? Tighter rules have been introduced. Filling those forms is an absolute nightmare. New systems. It can drive you mental. And stiffer penalties. It's not right just cutting our money like that. Vulnerable and disabled people, even those who are ill, say they are being pushed to the limit. I don't see why we should be punished for having a spare bedroom anyway. If it's just me that's not getting the help, who else is suffering in this world? In the Bridgend area, we followed people for 10 months to see the impact on some of those who are experiencing the changes and how challenging benefits decisions can be complicated and stressful. Why should I have to fight against it? But that's what it takes. And a lot of people would have given up, you know? A lot of people would have given up. This is the reality for those who are battling with benefits. Over the last four years, the Westminster government has revamped the entire benefit system. The aim is to provide better support to get people back to work, as well as making savings of £9 billion a year. One of the big changes is to housing benefit, with the introduction of the under-occupancy charge, which is commonly known as the bedroom tax. It affects 40,000 households in Wales who rent their homes from the council or housing associations. Those who have a spare room now have money deducted from their housing benefit. But what impact is the bedroom tax having in Wales's deprived communities? Kay Harris lives in an ex-mining community on the Betus estate near Bridgend. I love it, you. And why is that? Because we're a com community that all, like, if anything happens, we're there, like, you know? Kay's lived in Betus her entire life. Her three-bedroom rented house is home to husband Terence and also son Gareth. Since 2013, they've been £49 a month worse off. Well, this is the bedroom that I'm paying the bedroom tax for. The tax is the shortfall in her rent that she has to pay. One option to recoup it is to rent out the room. How can you rent a room of this size? You know, people's not going to pay, say, £40 a week for sleeping in this size room when they can only fit a wardrobe, because you can't put nothing up against the radiator, it's against the law. You can't put nothing up the win out at the window because it breaks out the light. The government's intention is that those who've been charged should move somewhere smaller. But that's difficult because there's a shortage of one and two bedroom properties all over Wales. So where they got the ideas from for these things, I don't know. Kay decided to try and challenge the decision and took her case to court, to an independent tribunal. But the judge ruled that she had no grounds to be exempt from the charge. I knew as soon as I walked through the door and seen the judge's face, I knew his decision. My grandchildren comes over on the weekend. I have one on a Friday night, one on a Saturday night. Um, so the bedroom is getting used. But they don't take that into consideration. But, uh, cheese. For a family surviving on benefits, the extra cost of paying the charge for the bedroom comes out of the already tight household budget. Flower. So on a normal week, could you afford everything on that list? There's usually pretty more, like there's my frozen veg, my meat for Sunday dinners and sausages, but half the time we can't afford them, so I just leave them. But even though the family is struggling, Kay hasn't given up the fight against the bedroom tax. To have this bedroom tax stopped and our money as normal, it would make a heck of a difference. If I don't fight, who's going to fight? You know, and something's got to be done.
Another big change to the benefit system is the phasing out of disability living allowance and the introduction of a new benefit called personal independence payments. But what impact does this dramatic changeover have on some of the most vulnerable people in Wales? Forty-three-year-old Andrew Williams is in so much pain from walking, he has to stop every 15 metres. He used to work in a steel fabrication plant, a job he loved. It's not just the, the physical bit. It's just not being able to do what I used to do. His life changed drastically in 2008, when he injured his back doing DIY. Injuries made worse by two car accidents. I used to do a lot of physical work. And I can't do it anymore. And it's, it, it's frustrating. I used to work 12-hour shifts and lifting heavy steel. At the moment, I'm still having problems adjusting mentally to what I can and can't do. Despite getting treatment for his depression and anxiety, there are some days when Andrew hits rock bottom. He's struggling to do the things that you want to do, whether it be physical things, mental things. Um, that kicks the depression off. And that's when you start getting silly thoughts like, you know, taking too many tablets or contemplating going out in the shed with a razor blade. And it's been happening quite a few times over the last five, six weeks. Not in straight, but help. Andrew relies on his partner, Donna, and was on disability living allowance, which went some way to help with the extra expense of his needs. But when Andrew's condition worsened, he tried to get an increase in his DLA. Because he was changing his claim, he had to apply instead for the new benefit, personal independence payments, which he did. But although he got the PIP award, he hadn't scored enough points to get financial support for his care needs, despite the fact that he'd had a £21 per week care allowance when he was on DLA. They took off what I had. I had low rate care. They've taken that away, even though DLA told me I had that indefinitely. Financially worse off and frustrated by the system, he's decided to appeal against the decision. For anyone surviving week to week on benefits, unforeseen costs can make a dent in even the best household budget. For the past two weeks, Kay's had to spend an extra £30 per week on bus fares. She's been shuttling back and forth from home to Morriston Hospital in Swansea, where her husband, Terence, has just had open heart surgery. Last Monday, that week Monday, when he had his heart attack, Last heart attack. Well, I thought it was all over. I know they told me on the phone yesterday the operation went well, but until you see it for yourself, you know, you don't believe it. Yeah. A week later, Terence is back home. But he's in pain and a long way from a full recovery. They replaced the valve with a mechanical valve, and they replaced an artery. And then broke my ribs, broke my chest bone, <laughs> and one hell of a cut. <laughs> As you can see, the chest bone expands, and I'm cough, and it's trying to tear. Ha, ha, ha.
Now they need the spare room more than ever. The bed has been fitted with a grab rail. Terence has trouble sleeping because he's in constant pain, so sleeps here to avoid disturbing Kay. If I gotta get in trouble and I need a key and so I would, what I would have to do is give the wall a bang. At least I know I'm only a door away. There's plenty of times I woke up and I, I, I've gone like this to his mouth just to make sure that he is actually breathing. And it is frightening. <coughs> I think people should have a spare bedroom. Just in case, like, you don't know what's around the corner. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't see why we should be punished for having a spare bedroom anyway. You know, we never, we never used to. Andrew Williams is fighting the decision on his PIP benefit. Although he got a payment for his mobility, he got nothing for his care needs. OK. This was never about money. This, to me, um, has always been about being believed. Activity. He's already had his case heard before a judge at a tribunal in Cardiff. And now he's preparing for a final hearing in two months' time. I've decided you need supervision, prompting or assistance from another person to manage your therapy. And that is therapy that takes... No he's reviewing his original application for personal independence payments. The same thing, but Using a point system, it's designed to assess his capabilities with daily activities. Activity number four, which is washing and bathing. They've given me... Three points on that one. Um, the it's not always clear to Andrew which sections of the form he should use to describe his complex disabilities and care needs. In my situation, it would be uh, either 3C or 3D, probably. It could actually be 3B. It's far from straightforward, and he's finding the whole application process frustrating. They want you to put everything into you know, nice little boxes. Right, on Mondays and Tuesdays I can't do that, on Wednesdays I can do that. Life is not like that. The appeals process is proving difficult, so Andrew has decided to get help. In town with his partner, Donna, Andrew is in more pain than usual, so he's chosen to use his wheelchair. Uh, oh, look at it. See, oh, things like that. What? Things like that bloody divot, but they, they don't flip in. Fix them and it jars my back like hell. They're heading to the Citizens Advice Bureau, who offer free support for people facing problems with their benefits. Are you Mr. Williams? I am indeed. Well, I'm Dennis Jones, right? Pleased to meet you. My pleasure. Dennis is the most experienced volunteer at Bridgend Citizens Advice. Still going strong at 90 years of age, he's the oldest in Wales, and his track record with appealing benefits cases is second to none. What had you lost? I've lost my care component. I was on low care DLA. If they're to have a chance at overturning the decision of the tribunal, Dennis will have to look at all the evidence of Andrew's care needs and make sure it's properly represented. There is, though, a possibility that he could end up worse off. Now, you are, you are aware that you've got 10 on mobility there. If you go to a tribunal, they can take it away as well as awarding. Yes. Yeah, I'm fully no, aware of that. Fully you're aware, you're of aware of that. Do you want me to go to the appeal with you? Right. Over the following weeks, Dennis will work closely with Andrew. I feel more confident going into the tribunal now with, um, with someone like that behind us. At least we've got support there to help us through it now, which hopefully is going to make life a bit easier.
Having lost her own case in court, there's nothing Kay Harris can do to avoid paying her £49 per month bedroom tax. But now she's campaigning to help others. Hello! Oh, hey, Kay, come on in. She's joined forces with Alan Short. Together they formed a campaign group called Bridgend Against the Bedroom Tax. And this appeal was, was uh, for... She's, she's quite ill. Alan is a retired ex-serviceman, and the campaign has taken over his life. Yeah. With no argument, it wasn't a bedroom. Mm. Said, yeah, we know Although Alan hasn't been bedroom taxed himself, he's helping people challenge their cases in the courts. This is what gets sent to people when they appeal from the council. Then it's usually anywhere between 132 and 167 pages. Now, how on earth is a tenant going to sort that lot out? It's enough to put anybody off. But Alan is happy to help. Right, these appeals here are um, appeals that are ongoing. These have all been withdrawn, these appeals. These here are all cases in the pipeline waiting to be done. These, these are cases that have been lost. How many cases have you got here? Uh, well, I just counted up on my laptop. There are 92 we had. What was it that made you start up this campaign? Fed up with the government walking all over people that are vulnerable. People are not prepared to speak up for themselves, so I'm prepared to do it for them. I can see it's wrong. It just isn't fair to people, people who've got no chance of paying. He is 100% into this campaign. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of him, and I'm, I'm glad to oh, be his thank friend. You. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Their next mission takes them to the heart of Welsh Government to see if they can get more support for their campaign. For months, Andrew has been living with the stress of his benefits appeal. He's on medication for severe anxiety, which sometimes prevents him from leaving the house. Sometimes you think, I'm going to go and do this, and you get to the front door, I think, no, I'm not. It's, it's too hard to even open the front door. You get this knot, these butterflies in your stomach. Today, he's managed to overcome his anxiety. With his PIP tribunal looming, Andrew heads to the Bridgend Citizens Advice Bureau. It's the last chance he has to get the all-important help he needs to prepare for his appeal. Uh, good morning, Mr. Williams. Morning. Dennis and Andrew look at where he could score some more points. But we have to see whether you deserve a higher reward on those activities for which you've got nothing, but which you could yeah. possibly achieve something. Right? Yeah. Last time, um, Andrew wasn't given any points for the help yeah. he needs with putting on his clothes. Then, yes. Dressing and undressing. How do you manage with socks? Most of the time, my partner does it. Most of the time? She does it for you. more than likely does them about four days a week, mm. four to four, you know, sometimes it's mm. seven days a week. Is that spoiling you out of...? No, no, I, I, it, I will it, try it first. It is needed. Yeah, is needed. I will try first, and if I can't do it, then she will, she will have to come in. The appeals process can put heavy demands on people, especially those who are ill or vulnerable. I wouldn't wish this sort of thing on, on anyone because it's, it, it's not easily dealt with. I have this constant thing in the back of my head. When am I going to have this uh, appeal? What's going to happen? When am I going to see Dennis? What does Dennis think about all this? It all goes on in your head all the time. When you go to sleep, everything, it's always there. Getting to the point now, you just want it over and done with. No matter what the decision, you just want it done with, because it's, it's getting too much now. With the tribunal just four days away, the pressure on Andrew is mounting. In Wales, 
40,000 tenants have to pay the under-occupancy charge, or bedroom tax, as it's more commonly known. That's almost half of those who rent their homes from housing associations or the council. And it's the highest proportion in any region in Great Britain. Alan and Kay see the charge as an unfair tax, and they're intent on doing something about it. They're in Cardiff, heading for the Welsh Assembly. That's where they let all the hot air out of there, look. <laughs> we just want to get our point across, and we want them to do something. Inside the Senate, along with other campaigners, church representatives and charities, they meet with some of the political movers and shakers. We deal mainly with tenants on very low incomes who just cannot afford to pay. They're, they're what we call the vulnerable tenants. We've got appeals waiting now and we've got many in the pipeline. Hi, my name is Kay Harris and I'm a bedroom taxpayer. Me and a few others made a campaign against the tax and we feel it is unfair to be punished because we want to live peacefully in our own homes. They are not buildings, they are people's homes who have settled for years and brought up families and who have gone and made their own families. Opportunities for Kay to get her story across to those in power don't come around too often. We still are urging people to join our campaign to fight with us so that we'll have more support for to come to places like this. Thank you very much. Kay gets the attention of Assembly member Joyce Watson. I don't want to move. You know, like, and half the time he uses that bedroom anyway because he wakes up in the night because he's in so much pain. Said he goes into the spare bedroom, so it's not as if the bedroom's not being used. I just think to myself, well, why are they punishing us like they are? And why us? Why are they hammering the, the people who need help? The sick, the old, disabled, yeah. the infirm, the vulnerable. Yeah. Whichever category you want to put yeah. them in, they are the vulnerable. The Senev has no say in the under-occupancy charge, because it's a Westminster policy. But Kay and the other campaigners want the Assembly to create a fund to pay the charges of everyone who's been hit in Wales, similar to what's already happened in Scotland. Only a few paperwork. It's the day Andrew Williams takes his battle to court over his personal independence payments. So how are you feeling this morning, Andrew? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Nervous. Anxious. <sighs> Taking extra tablets. <sighs> Because of his anxiety and his difficulty with walking, the tribunal service have sent a taxi to pick him and his partner Donna up. Yeah, it is. Morning. The last year has seen increasing numbers of people taking their benefits appeals to tribunal. So Andrew is not alone. Oh, excuse me. Morning. Without Dennis's support, Andrew wouldn't have made it this far. Yeah, that phone is off. So, let's go. For a second time, his case is being heard by two experts and a judge. They'll decide whether or not to uphold the Department of Work and Pensions decision on his benefits. They emerge almost an hour later. They went through everything. They went further than just the walking. They actually went through all the points that, that we were querying, didn't they? But it's not over yet. Couldn't make a decision there because we'd overrun. We just now have to wait and see. It'll be another two days before the decision comes through. Back on the Betus estate, Terence is still recovering from open heart surgery. Right, go make a coffee. The unexpected costs from when he was hospitalised 
have added to their money worries, and they've fallen behind on the rent. Now, as well as having to pay the £11 per week bedroom tax, they are also paying off their arrears. It's, it's costing us now um, £26.60 a week. And our £26.60 could have gone on decorating the room. <laughs> the government's intention is to get people to downsize. But Terence and Kay feel that moving isn't an option. A house is just a building. When you've got people living in there that have been there for such a long time, it's a home. They've settled in that home. So why not leave them stay? As I said, the only way I'll get out of this house is in a wooden box. In the six months after the under-occupancy charge was introduced, the number of tenants in arrears in Wales increased by 23%. Now, as a result, the housing associations are predicting evictions. I don't want to open it. The results of Andrew's tribunal have arrived. It's taken him four months to challenge the DWP's decision on his PIP benefit. A decision noticed. Mr. Williams has limited ability to carry out activities of daily living. He scores nine points. Finally, Andrew has got the recognition that he has care needs. Woohoo! And he's won his case. <sighs> it's over that. Yeah. It's all done and dusted. On top of his other benefits, he's been awarded an additional £55 per week. That's more than he had before. But they put giving you back your case component, which they originally took off. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy I've been heard. I'm happy it's all over. Andrew calls Dennis at Citizens Advice, Dennis. whose support Dennis, made Andrew. all the difference. Hello, Andrew. Oh, yeah, I've just um, just read it. Yeah. And uh, still in a bit of shock, actually. Why is that? Because uh, somebody actually listened for a change. Ex exa exactly. You went to get care and you got it. I was very pleased when I saw the result. I think it's a very good result. Yeah, I, I couldn't be happier with it. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye, man. Ta-da. It's a happy relief. It's a happy ending to uh, an otherwise sad story, I think. <laughs> For those who are ill or vulnerable, challenging benefits decisions can be a gruelling process. A survey shows that most of those who try say their health suffers as a result. But although the benefits appeals process can be difficult, growing numbers of people are successful. Next time on Battling with Benefits. They just sanctioned me. A young Valleys couple struggle to comply with stricter job centre rules. Only when we checked today that we noticed half the money was missing. And when Bridgend-born Will Thomas returned to Britain injured after having worked abroad, he struggles to get any benefits at all. They have the nerve to tell me that I have to be back in my own country for two years to get what I'm entitled to. The series continues at the same time next week. Next tonight on BBC One Wales, a question of sport.